Europe is sweltering under an unusually early summer heat wave. Record-breaking temperatures have sparked forest fires in Spain and even here in Germany. After the hot, dry weather is putting pressure, pardon me, and the hot, dry weather is putting pressure on regions already suffering from drought. The roar and crackle of wildfire burning its way through northern Spain. Firefighters are struggling to contain flames that have already claimed over 200 square kilometers of woodlands. Spain is sizzling under a heat wave that has swept across much of Europe, with temperatures far higher than usual for this time of year. Forest fires also near the German capital Berlin. Here, unexploded munitions from World War II are complicating efforts to put out the flames. Experts fear that worse is to come. France, too, is feeling the heat. Like in Spain, temperatures have exceeded 40 degrees Celsius in some places. Meteorologists say it is the earliest heat wave to hit the country in 75 years. As people look for ways to cool off, a zoo in Paris is providing icy treats for its occupants. So here we have a frozen watermelon mix for the giraffes. There we have tubs of blood for the carnivores. And then here we have blocks of ice mixed with meat for the lions. These unusual refreshments, a welcome relief from the baking heat. In Italy, the early onset of summer is drying up waterways. The Po River, the country's longest, has disappeared completely in some sections. This situation can get even worse. It can kill animals, affect agriculture, harm everything. The river has already run out of water. I used to go fishing, but now I can only fish for stones. Scientists warn that extreme temperatures this early are caused by climate change and are said to become a regular feature in years to come. And for more on the situation in northern Italy, I'm joined by Alexander Dume in the northern Italian town of Varese. He runs a company that helps companies and governments deal with changes in the climate. Uh, good to have you with us, Alexander. And as we just heard in that report, there is a serious drought problem uh, in the River Po. Could you tell us more about that? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you for having me. The northern part of Italy is suffering from the worst drought in 70 years. It threatens food production and electricity production. Here in North Italy, we have a lot of industrial and agricultural activities that require water. For example, in the Piemonte and Lombardy region, rice is produced for risotto, and this crop requires a lot of water. More than 90% of the total Italian risotto rice production happens here in northern Italy. At this very moment, the rice paddies are short of water, and this will impact the risotto rice production. Also, other types of crop production suffer from the shortage of water, like hazelnuts, grain, vineyards, and food production for animals with an estimated drop up to 40%. This will impact the overall food production with the result that the food price will increase. Then the production of electricity by hydroelectric power plants, which is about 50% of the country's supply, is down about 50% due to the shortage of water. Mm. Also interesting to, to mention yeah. is that the Adriatic Sea has entered the Po Delta about 10 kilometers inland, which is really something striking. Yeah. And just can you tell us, I mean, as you were beginning to do the story of this drought, I mean, how, how did it appear? When did it begin? It, did it come as a surprise? What, what took place? Well, I have a an, an, an background as a scientist in, in, in air quality, meteorology and climate change. So for me, this is not really a surprise. I live here in the northern part of Italy and it hasn't rained since, or hardly rained since the December of last year. So only for, almost for six months we have seen uh, very small amounts of rain. Um, the water level, for instance, I live close to Lago Maggiore, and uh, lakes like Coma and Gada Lake are dangerously low, the, the level waters, jeopardizing irrigation. And as I said before, this is not something new. Scientists from all over the world have shown in their studies that climate is changing. Their studies show that around the Mediterranean, it gets hotter and drier. So this is not a one-time event. It's very likely to happen more often in the future. And, and also in other parts of Europe and the world. Let me just ask you a quick question. 
Is there anything the people mm -hmm. there or even the government of Italy can do about this? Or is it just a global phenomenon that requires global action? It, exactly. It, it requires global action. And we need to change our habits in using energy, implement more and faster renewable energy, such as solar and wind parks. And uh, this is uh, what is really uh, very urgent. And I'm afraid that the current data shows that the COP21 Paris Agreement of 1.5 degrees Celsius we are not going to meet. All right, Alexander de May in northern Italy from the town of Arese on the drought there. Thanks so much. You're welcome.